Stood Expected got quite a bit of traffic on the C++ mailing list last year, and this most recent paper by Jeff Garland is pretty exciting. The proposal is to include some of these additions that Cybran made to their expected library that you can find here. They allow you to take an expected value and chain a series of monadic functions to it. Now, I'm used to seeing quite a bit of code like this. Every operative function returns an integer, which represents some sort of failure state or success state. And there's usually some function or macro which checks the error codes like this. It'll usually perform some deallocation or something like that. I don't do any deallocation here except for at the end of the function. There's usually also an enum that has either the success state and all the valid failure states along with messages corresponding to each of those. And then there's usually some function to check the error value and if something went wrong they'll print out the error and exit with that error code. There's usually some more deallocation in here as well but I've omitted it for simplicity's sake. In functions like this do work function here there will usually be some check to see if something has gone wrong and then you'll return some value from that error enum that we saw up above. So for example if we make this true, then we'll see that some other kind of failure was printed out. And we can change the error that we return and see that we get a different error printed out here. This is pretty common in C, but I've seen it in quite a few C++ code bases as well. Now, I do like that we get to use value semantics for errors using this error handling mechanism. And all of our error checking is really explicit, which I like as well. But all the error checking is pretty noisy in my opinion and obfuscates the intent of the programmer. And in modern C++, I think we have some really compelling alternatives. Now, in the last year, three papers on stood expected have come through the C++ mailing list. The most recent was from Jeff Garland on extra monadic functions for stood expected. These are and then, or else, and transform. We'll just be looking at and then, or else today. But these are all from Cybrand's wonderful TL expected library, which you should all go and check out. This is really elegant in my opinion, because instead of representing expected values in their logic as control flow, using these other monadic functions, they look more like a pipeline or streamline of operations, which is much more intuitive to me. So let's hop back over to Godbolt and revisit that matrix example, except using two of my favorite features from C++23, std MD span and std expected. First, we'll set up some types. The matrix type that we'll be using is an MD span of type double with two dynamic extents, so it's a two-dimensional matrix. And the expected type that we're working with will be either a matrix or a string indicating the reason for failure. And then down here in our main function, we'll allocate some memory and we'll pass it to our MD span. And then we'll start a chain of expected values mapped to functions, just like in Jeff Garland's paper and in the examples for Cybrand's expected. We still get to use value semantics for errors, which I really, really enjoy, but our code is not clouded with so much error checking code. It's all delegated to some function in the chain. It's really enjoyable to write functions that go in these chains as well. You can see here that we have some precondition that the matrix is square. And if that's not met, then we can just return an unexpected string. Otherwise, we can perform whatever work we are going to do and return the expected value. Just to show what handling a failure condition would look like, I'll change the shape of this matrix so that it fails. Now the matrix is no longer square and this setDiag function should return an error. And we can see that our error string is handled in this report errors function. Now any function we pass to and then or, or else does have to be monadic on whatever our expected value is but that doesn't mean we are limited in what we can pass to these functions. The first example would be to use a functor like this, which takes a size t for the row and a double for the value that we'll assign the row to, and then it overloads the call operator, which allows us to pass the struct in down here. Now you can see we can pass parameters to this set row constructor, which will then perform the given operation down here. That's how you might pass some value from the enclosing scope into this monadic function and then. Another possibility would be to use std bind with a function that takes additional parameters. So this set row function, for example, takes the matrix, takes the row and the value, just like the functor did up above, and it performs the exact same operation. So if I just use std bind on that function, we can find some arguments to that function and use it in and then. And you can see that we set the row three to the value 17.4 by using std bind. And another option that you could use down here is a lambda. You can see using this lambda, I incremented every value along the diagonal of this matrix. There are probably other ways that you could accomplish all this, but I just thought I'd highlight three ways that you could pass functions to these monadic functions on expected values. Thanks for joining and I'll see you next time.